Hello friends and welcome to this course where we will jump straight into realization of networking technologies primarily focusing on Cisco products. I might also add in other vendors equipments to make it multi-vendor networking course. I have already got one course on Juniper which is an excellent introduction to Juniper networks but that is more focused on Gen CIA certification. Now as far as basic networking concepts are concerned you really do not need much hardware for that like for CCNA certification level knowledge a couple of switches and routers are more than enough to get you through but when you are talking about large networks exceeding 5 networking devices then definitely not everyone likes to buy them all besides the purchasing cost even if you are going for used ones the noise and heat from them all would be enough to make you sweat in your pants and by the end of the month the electricity bill would be enough to make you visit ICU. For that we can emulate the devices using different programs available in the market. Now you must be familiar of uh, GNS3 routing switching emulator program freely available from gns3.com which works using Dynamips Dynamips engine to emulate the actual iOS images of Cisco. Its later versions do provide integration with virtual box based virtual machines and you can also use it for Kimu based virtualization. I tell you it's a great piece of software and I highly recommend it to you in order to help you implement concepts. However, there are many aspects where GNS3 alone is not enough. For example, GNS3 cannot emulate Cisco switches, so you cannot really implement VLANs, STP, Ether channel based layer 2 network scenarios. Since GNS3 is based on Dynamips, it consumes heavy CPU and although you can tweak CPU throttling but sometimes it just does not help. Moreover GNS3 is focused primarily towards Cisco with additional support for Juniper products as well but there are many more networking products from other vendors which are widely used in enterprise environments like uh, Alcatel, Extreme Networks, Extreme Networks, uh, Palo Alto, P A L O Palo Alto, or even Checkpoint. Now, Cisco has this product known as IOU or IOL, which stands for iOS on Unix or iOS on Linux. These are iOS images built with native Unix support so you can execute them straight from the command line. They are fast to execute and consume very less CPU cycles. There was a product known as IOU Web which provided a nice graphical web interface to connect these IOU routers which now has been replaced with UNL. So you cannot really find this product IOU web anymore. His, devel his developer has changed it to UNL or Unified Networking Lab which is essentially a virtual machine that you can use to emulate multi-vendors environments on Linux as well as on Windows. In the upcoming videos, I'll show you how you can use these products. So stick around and I'll see you in there. Hello guys. So in this video I just wanted to show you regarding GNS3 or Graphic Network Simulator as we call it. If you already know about it, it's a good thing but for those who are unaware of it or who do not know who, how to set it up or certain parameters regarding its functionality, let me just take you quickly through these setups. So first of all you need to download it. It's freely available from genus3.com website. 
you just need to create your login by giving it the username and password and you can straight away download it so once it gets downloaded i have already one with me which is 1.3.3 and the latest version available at the moment is 1.4.4 so you can download that one as well with different versions the developers change certain options and add in certain functionalities as well so you just need to double click it and it will get installed it's pretty straightforward setup and you 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 can't really go wrong with that so once it gets installed you come on to its executable and this is the interface that you get once you install it and uh, this is the main working area over here in this space you create your own topology and uh, let me just show you some quick preferences you come on to miscellaneous and maybe start disable that uh, project dialog at the startup you can also disable this automatically screenshot when you are saving the project maybe disable the updates if you want to regarding the send crash reports it's, it's really up to you what you want to enable or disable you, you just need to go through with these options and set them up according to your own desires what you what console application you want to use i'm using putty at the moment this is by default included with the gns3 and uh, these are the paths where you can save your work also you can change the style i like this one this is the legacy style some colorful icons and the important thing is that from here this is the area from where you can add the devices these are the interfaces once you get your devices connected this gives the console start button stop and you can also add in these figures to kind of group together certain devices or maybe you can use eclipse or circle so that you can encompass different devices and colorize colorize them if you want to to make them appear in a single group just for presentation purpose it does not have any significance with the actual working of the devices likewise you can uh, write some note if you want to so let's just remove this one and let me show you the important thing regarding adding the image so once you have got cisco ios actual ios you come on to preferences and over here you click on ios routers click on new and whatever ios image you have got with you you need to put it over here so if i click on browse and go to the desktop then this is the image that i can use you can also use binary i have converted that binary into image so that it gets executed quickly because if you have got binary image then they first get decompressed once you lost them so i have skipped that part i have already converted them into image and uh, if i click on open it asks me that if i want to copy it into the D, into the location that gns3 has set itself for the ios image you can select you can choose yes if you want to but no as well it's it, it does not really make much difference so click on next from here it is you can change the name if you want to and the platform if it has got options like over here it is giving me certain options that i want to change so let's just leave it default that at the time being it is using 3725 model of 3700 series routers you can also select this option to install or make this appear as an ethernet switch router so i do not want it i just want it regular router i click on next and this is the default ram that it has selected for us let's just leave it there 128 is more than enough for your working go ahead and from here you can add certain interfaces that you want to by default it has got fast ethernet installed so we cannot select it this will always be there by default and i believe it has got two fast ethernet interfaces if you want to add more interfaces you can select from these drop down options this fast ethernet these are four serial interfaces and this is 16 port fast ethernet switching module it does provide some functionality regarding switches but not all the all the functionality that a switch provides you so let's select 
the serial interfaces click on next and from here it gives us some more options regarding wic modules if you want to add again interfaces if you want to add in let's just leave them click on next and this is the important option over here this says that if you if what idle pc value you want to set in now what really happens that if you do not do that in the earlier versions of uh, gns3 this option was not part of this uh, uh, wizard that we are seeing at the moment we needed to set it up manually by ourselves by hit and trial methods so if we do not set this idle pc value what it does is that even if you add in a couple of routers they and, and you turn them all at the same time then they tend to consume all the cpu resources or i should say that your cpu will go up to its maximum value so you cannot really work with larger topologies so this idle pc value what it does is that it keeps your cpu threshold to a minimum value so in this in these later versions of gns3 they have added this functionality in the setup wizard you just quickly click on this idle pc finder and it will automatically find the best idle pc value for this model of 3725 series router and set this value as well so you do not need to do anything manually so just click on it and let it find the idle pc value so this is the idle pc value that it has found for this particular uh, router module i click on ok and it has already set this value i click finish and this is the template that is generated for our use i click on apply click ok and now i can simply select this router and drag it over into the working area space i can also connect this router with virtual pcs by dragging this virtual pc over here click on its configuration and uh, maybe if i want to change the console port but let me turn this on and uh, let's just try to connect this one with with this router interface so once it gets connected i can turn this pc on and it's just a simulator it's not a real pc it's not a it's not a vm machine it's just the simulator that these gns3 developers they have put this in for our use so once we have this window and you want to see that what options are here what command options so we can check the arp table of this simulated pc or we can select the dhcp options we have the ping functionality which is the most important one as far as connectivity is concerned to if we want to see if the host is up or not or if we are able to reach it or not likewise trace route is also available so at the moment and, and we have also this show command to see what options we have set up with this pc so if i type in show we see that by default it has got no ip address to set the ip address i need to type in ip press enter and it gives us the options that how we can set in the ip address so if i type in ip using this method which is over here this one let me just highlight this one so i type in ip and the whatever the ip address that i want to type so let's just say that 1.1.1.1 with a submit mask of 30 and let's just also give it a gateway of 1.1.1.2 once i do this it should take these settings and uh, we should be able to ping ourselves our own ip address which was 1.1.1.1 which we do so now let's come on to the working area and to turn on the router you simply need to click on start once it gets started we can choose to connect it with console and uh, just give it a while so that its boot sequence gets completed once the router has booted up we can quickly go into configuration mode and that particular interface that we have connected our host with and do a quick ip address configuration by giving it the ip address and subnet mask bring the interface up and uh, try to ping the virtual pc which i which we had configured earlier by the ip address of 1111 
and ideally we should see that we should have the connectivity which we do so you can add in more number of pcs if you want to like just select them and drag them in the working area and connect them all together as per your own requirement and topology if that whatever you practice on with to turn all the devices i need to simply click on this red button and let me also show you that how you can add a loopback interface so that you can connect your devices like these devices over here to your actual host machine like the movement that i'm working on is the windows 7 machine how you can do that for windows environment so the way to do that is first you need to create a loopback interface by going into the control panel and from control panel you can go to system device manager the procedure might change a little bit with respect to the windows version that you are using but i believe for windows 7 vista and even xp i'm not sure about windows 10 i've not used it but for these versions the procedure will be more or less the same so from here device manager you can go to add legacy hardware click on next and choose the hardware manually from the list from here you can come on to network adapters which is over here click on next and from this menu select on microsoft and from your right pane you can select loopback adapter now once you do that click on next it will get it installed and uh, you will have this option over here now sometimes what happens is that once you do it and you try to use this loopback adapter that I'll just show you in the Genus 3 does not work. And uh, what really happens is that you can restart your machine to make it work. And other thing you need to be careful is that your Win PCAP or the packet capturing program or service should be running at the boot time that gets automatically installed once you install the JNS3 software it also installs the Wireshark which is packet capturing, packet capturing software so make sure that that service is running so if, if, if it does not get started or does not work while you're connecting this interface with your JNS3 appliances then you need to restart your machine so once you have got this loopback interface over here you can come on into the control panel let me just close this one and from control panel you can go to the area where you can enable or disable adapter settings so this is the adapter that I had created earlier which is the loopback it is written that is a Microsoft loopback adapter I click on its properties I and I can give it the IP address whatever I want to so let's say that the IP address is 2222 and uh, now the problem is that how we can add this into our topology over here so you need to go to and click this cloud option drag this cloud into the working area you can also change it simple symbol so that it reflects your thoughts let's say it's a PC and uh, from here we need to configure it and select that particular interface which was by the name of local area connection 0 local area connection 2 this is the loopback connection if you remember that from here local area connection 2 which was a loopback adapter that we had created so select this one click on add click on apply and okay all the way now from here you can add the interfaces by selecting this icon and uh, let me see if it is okay so from here select this interface and uh, connect it with the particular router so once it gets connected sometimes it does not work so what you can do is that it really depends on the genus 3 version that you are using what you can do is that you can put in this generic ethernet switches in between and connect this wire through this switch and this switch in turn gets connected with the router so 
once you turn on this router let's say if we turn this on and wait for a while since it gets its boot sequence completed so once we have the prompt I can quickly go into the configuration mode and the interface that I have connected with give it the IP address 2.2.2.3 let's say and an IP address of uh, or submit mask of 8 do a no shut and now ideally we should be able to ping the loopback interface or of our host machine whose IP address was 2222 which we can and from host machine if I come on to start menu and from here I can select this command prompt so our own IP address is 2222 and the router that we are connected with is having an IP address of 2223 which we have just configured so I should be able to ping this router ethernet interface from my host machine which we can a couple of more options as far as adding of appliances is concerned you can come on to preferences and if you have got virtual machines like earlier if you needed to add in Junos image you could do that using virtual machine or using these Kimu's options but now Kimu option does not have the support for uh, adding the Junos image you can only add in the Junos image if you have got the virtual machine for that Junos image and you can get that virtual machine imported into virtual box and from virtual box you can reflect that over here by selecting that particular option that you had created with whatever name for uh, a SAR firewall which is Cisco adaptive security appliance you can come into Kimu and from here you can select on new these are the default templates that uh, GNS3 offers us you can select in ASA 8.42 if you have got that with you click on next this is the name that you want to set in then click on next and uh, 1 GB RAM this is sufficient do not change these settings these are by default and they work well click on next and from here you need to give the two files if you have got them with you to make the ASA work I have put them on the desktop one is the init file which is over here and the next one is kernel file which we need to select as well once they get selected I can finish the setup and it creates the template for us that we can use for our working now I can select on this firewall and drag this firewall in the working area to start it up again I need to click start and once it gets started I can choose the console to connect it with so we'll just give it a moment and the process should be started so we have it booted up and uh, it is taking just a bit of time it has by default it has got four ethernet or gigabit ethernet interfaces but you can change the settings by going into preferences and go to particular key move from here you can edit it and from here you can select the or you can enhance the number of interfaces but by default it supports four gigabit ethernet interfaces this ASA firewall you can also capture the interface traffic by clicking on that particular interface right click on it and do the start capture so that it starts the Wireshark uh, program and uh, from that program you can really see that what packets are moving and what layer is layer 2 information layer 3 information or even application level information so do use this product it's very good as far as emulation environment is concerned and you can really uh, practice around your your concepts and uh, before you do the actual deployment in the on, on your job and there are certain scenarios that you can really not implement on the job 
because of uh, the, the things that might you, you they might jeopardize the configuration of your actual working environment so it's a good product do use it and i hope you have found this video informative i would like to thank you for viewing hello friends in the previous video we had a quick look at the genus 3 and how we can use it to emulate different topologies and in this video i will show you that how we can use iou or ios on unix or linux as well it is also known as iol and in my previous videos i talked about that iou is the ios which has got native linux support so it consumes pretty much very less cpu and very low memory consumption so if you are to build that topologies then as compared to dynamics based or gns3 emulation this iou really helps you a lot now you can search it around our internet and uh, i may also uh, maybe put up a link in the description of the of these lectures or maybe as an added content so that you can go over there and download it by yourself and practice it so it's just pretty, not that difficult there is nothing to be set up you just let, let, let me show you let me just remove this one and uh, bring up the uh, where i have copied those uh, some of the images these are the switch images and this one is layer 3 images or for router one and uh, the way to run it is that you just need to execute these files but before execution you also need to have a license and license file is kind of particular belongs to that particular host that you are working on so it's specific to your machine and the way to generate that license is using this keygen.py or the is the python script that you run on your machine and it generate a number that you can put in this particular file so let's see how we can do it let me just bring up the window and get into that particular path which is desktop and in iou so once i'm over here and i do a list by the way since it was natively for linux so it will not run on windows so you need to have a linux machine and if you are already familiarized with the linux or unix environment then it, it should be a pretty much walk in the park for you so over here i need to type in python first to get started and to generate the license file and after that this python script which is keygen.py after that i press enter and these are just the two lines that i need to add in into a file by the name of iourc which is over here so if i open it up or maybe i can show you the contents of this file right away if i type in cat and iourc and these are the contents of the file that i have copied in there now after this is done and, and and also this the, the, the this file this license file it has it has to be on the same path where your images are running so if i've got images that i need to run on in this path which is desktop iou then of course i need to put this uh, license file in the same very folder now to run the image i simply need to execute it let's say if i want to run this layer 3 image which is the router one so i type in i86 and l3 and after that i need to give a space and after that i need to mention the machine number for example if i type in one two three four five whatever number i want to type in that will be considered as the machine number and why it is significant i'll show you in a while so just at the moment let's go along with this number one now once i do that we see that the image is putting up and by default this image has got eight ethernet interfaces with eight serial interfaces so just give it a while while it gets booted up its sequence gets completed and uh, once it gives us the prompt i'll show you the command line all right so it's booted up and it is asking whether i need to enter into the initial configuration i can type in no and auto terminate the auto install process and uh, just hang in for a while it takes a bit initially but then it's really quick all right here we are 
I press enter and I go into enable mode and if I type in show version it shows us that the system image file is the one that I had executed and if I bring it up then it says that the Cisco IS software, Linux software and this is the version number that we are running at the moment and if I go into let's say com p I can do all the pretty much all the configuration that is supported by this particular image that I am having. Now it's all good. I mean, you are running a router, but but what's the use of running one router when you cannot or you are unable to connect it with other machines or you have no way to do that, right? So so there is a way to do it, and for that you need to create a file with no extension. Just the name of the file should be netmap all in capital. And if I show you the contents of this netmap file that I have already created, is pretty much very simple. This is the one that is of significance, significance value. Remember the router image that I have turned on or I have executed, I had appended a 1 at the end. This one shows that number. So if I had used 2, I would have put in 2 over here. It says, this line says, that for router number 1 and its 0 oblique 0 interface which is Ethernet in this case it should be connected to router number 2 with router number 2's 0 oblique 0 interface so pretty simple likewise router 1 0 oblique 1 interface should be connected to router 11 0 oblique 1 interface so it's, it's, it's kind of you do not have a graphical uh, view of the topology but you can make a topology by hand or on on, on a drawing pad or maybe uh, maybe in some graphical software that you are using like in windows it's a paint utility like likewise if i am using this tablet over here i can simply show you that i can generate something like i have got a router over here or maybe this is connected in this trica and these are interfaces let's say 0 oblique 0 0 oblique 0 0 oblique 1 likewise 0 oblique 1 and say 0 oblique 1 should be connected to 0 oblique 0 so just these three routers i can generate or i can i can write write that uh, nmap file in this way that router number 1 2 and 3 interfaces should be connected in this manner the way that i am showing you right over here so just uh, give the router number a full column and then the interface number to be connected with the other router's interface number. Now a while back, I reckon a, a year or so, it's uh, February 2016 at the moment and I reckon back in 2015, by mid of 2015 there was a product by the name of IOU Web. So in fact this guy developed a web interface where we can make this topology and we would have been able to execute these IOU softwares. Now this product is no more uh, supported by the developers. This has been replaced by UNet Lab that I might show you in the upcoming video. But you can still find this IOU web software and I might be able to upload it in the, in the repository of these lectures or you can uh, search it around by this particular name and I'm sure you will find it on through the search engines. Now what it really has, let me just remove this one and uh, so this the package that is for Debian its only size is 3.8 megabyte it has got nothing heavy in it just a couple of uh, web pages I would say and symbols to really uh, help us in making our topology. So these are the ETC uh, and, and in order to run it you need to have Apache software on your Linux machine like I am using Ubuntu at the moment and I have got Apache server so I just need to run it and this will be executed. So since it's a Debian package I just need to double click it using my software center Ubuntu software center and it will get automatically installed in the system. Uh, or on those particular paths where they should be placed and after that when I execute the Apache server to run it then I should be able to access the web interface 
through my web browser and let me just show you how to do it so i bring up my terminal uh, which is here and i since it's a service i need to execute this command uh, using uh, root privileges so i type in sudo service and the service name which is apache2 and after that i type in start so that i can start the service i give in my password and once the service is started it says that the apache2 could not have it it does not really matter the point is that it has given me the okay output which means the service has started and if i type in let's say if i want to find the status of the service i see that apache2 service is now running earlier it was not running so now i open up my browser which is here and i simply type in localhost or the ip address of my local machine so i type in localhost and this is the interface of this iou web so these are a couple of labs which are uh, which do come along with the software but uh, these are the ones that i have built myself this bgp and these test ones uh, but to create it to create a lab you need to click on this uh, icon over here which says uh, just hang on for a while it says add new lab you can also create your own folder and in that folder you can create many labs so let's click on lab so once i click on this lab it says me that what name i want to give to this lab so let's say let's call it uh, maybe my lab and after that if we want to give uh, any description so let's say say call it my lab my lab one maybe let's leave it my lab and now if i bring it down a bit uh, if you want to add any additional info you can write it over here i do not want it at the moment and this is the key point this is the netmap file that uh, i had told you about earlier that you need to put in the parameters over here and it will automatically generate a netmap file related to this particular lab that you are trying to create so let's say that uh, i want router number one to have its interface 0 oblique 0 connected with router number 2 interface 0 oblique 0 and router number 2 interface 0 oblique uh, 1 should be connected to router number 3 interface 0 oblique 1 while router number uh, 3 interface 0 oblique uh, 0 should be connected to router number uh, 1 interface 0 oblique 1 so once that part is done i come down all the way and i click on add now once that is added this file it has generated me these parameters that i need to put in the device these are the ids these have been taken up by from from these values one two three and now i can name them so that once they are shown on the topology in the graphical view it is easy for me to pick the names up so I can simply type in R1 maybe, R2 and R3 and from here it is asking me what images uh, I want to use for these particular devices. So let's say I want to have uh, layer 3 images for all these 3 devices and uh, after that any RAM or the Ethernet or serial interfaces that if I want to add or change. So let's just leave these settings at the default and if I type in save or click save over here once it is saved we see that we have this lab over here by the name of my lab if I click on it it takes me right through the lab and I can move these icons around to look it more sensible and more presentable. Now I can save these positions so that once I come back to this topology I see that my my symbols are not jumbled up like they were earlier. Now to run the devices, uh, you can come on to devices over here and from here you can run any other device or all of the devices that are in here. It is also supported by Wireshark which is uh, package capturing software. But if I come on to diagram and uh, let me click on it one more time. So 
if I click on R2 and from here over here all right so so maybe the options are up here I cannot really see them but let me just pull it down like this and from here I can stop the devices but I cannot really start one so I need to go to devices and in the devices let's just say I want to start R1 so once it gets started you see the symbol gets green from red and likewise if I come to diagram we see that the symbol has turned from red to blue now how to connect this device if you point your pointer on this router and let me just grab my pen if we point this pointer over here we see that we will see a value at the bottom somewhere here let me just try it clearly so if I bring me my pointer over here you see the value which is local host and the port is 2001 so I need to tell that on this port and I'll be able to access router number one so let's see if we are able to do that let me bring up my console and uh, maybe this one okay so I type in telnet is the protocol that I want to use to connect to and local host and after that the port which was 2001 so we see that I am able to get connected to this router and it was also displaying over here the name of the router which was R1 which is over here and just let it complete boot sequence so we are in likewise we can connect to other routers as well if you bring your pointer over here we see that the port is 2002 the port for this router is 2003 so really a very good piece of software it's it's, it's, it's not available anymore I mean it, it is available you can search it around through the search engines but it has been modified into a better product and that better product is now called as unit lab and you can the way it has been done is just like is just that it's just a virtual machine so all these functionalities have been put in, into virtual machine and now you can use it on uh, your windows machine as well as on linux machine while in this case this was only supported on unix environment so i'll talk about that later uh, but over here i'm gonna end this video and uh, i hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing. Hello friends. Well, in the previous lectures, we have seen how we can use GNS3 to emulate iOS images based on Dynamic Server. And we have also seen iOS on Unix functionality or as we call it IOU. Well, what GNS3 developers did is that they integrated these IOU features with GNS3 and the great, great benefit that we get out of that is that we can emulate and practice switches functionalities and commands within the GNS3 topologies. Of course there are limitation of IOU layer 2 images that I talked about but still for CCNA, CCNP and for your actual deployments in your ISP most of the functions are available and it's really a good feature that it has been integrated in GNS3. So let's see how we can get this functionality achieved in GNS3 with support of IOU images. The first thing that you need to have is the GNS3 virtual machine. It's an over file that you can get downloaded from internet from search engines. If I show you over here the one that I've already downloaded is this one GNS3 IOU VM version number 1.3.3 and also make sure that the GNS3 version that you are using as an over file or virtualized machine it can only be imported or used with the GNS3 version of the same number that is GNS 1.3.3 so my point is that if you are using over file of let's say 1.3.4 and GNS3 version maybe 1.2 then they would be incompatible they would not work together so make sure that these two are of the same version number I have searched 
on the search engine and I found that these two 1.3.3 are best suited for this type of configurations. So try to get the same. Now once you get this OR file downloaded, you can get it imported into Oracle Virtual Box which is over here. I have already imported this file and I have not changed much as far as settings are concerned. I have just gone into settings and the one change that I made, uh, you can leave the setting into host only adapter or maybe bridge. it's up to you, Change it. leave it to host only adapter and uh, also if I show you the preferences of the virtual box itself and in network, I have given the IP address of this host only adapter which is connected with the virtual box and I have given the IP address of 56.100. Also if you need to access this uh, virtualized machine through your computer or PC or whatever you are working on, you can create a loopback interface and assign it the IP address of the same class that this virtual box is on. And the way to do that is uh, if you go into Windows Device Manager, at the moment I am working on Windows 7. So let me just pull up Control Panel for Windows 7 and in that I click on System and in System I go into Device Manager. Over here, let me just click it yes because it requires administrative privileges. Over here, if I click on the name of the machine and manually add legacy hardware, click on next, then search the hardware through the available list, I click on next and over here let's bring it down to interfaces or network adapters, click on next and after here go, click on Microsoft and from Microsoft sub list you can select the loopback adapter. You click on next and it will install the drivers and you will get this kind of, let me just expand it, this kind of adapter in your network settings. And you can just like going into the, let me just bring it forward. So I go into control panel and in control panel after adding that loopback adapter, you come into network and sharing center and from here I click on the change adapter settings. This is the loopback adapter that we have added. Simply click on it, change the settings and assign it the IP address of the same class that you had used for your IOU virtual machine. I have given the IP address of 56.1 to this laptop, the IOU virtual machine is residing is at 56.101 and there is a reason for that. You can change it of course, there is no problem with that but by default it's 56.101. So if I click over here and if I show you that how we can add that IOU virtual machine, first thing you need to come on to server. Now local server is enabled, that GNS3 will start its local server as well, but also add on a remote server. And remote server is the GNS server which runs in the virtualized machine or in the virtual box that you have imported. Now by default this entry is here, 192.168.56.101 and a port 8000 TCP port. Once you click it add, it appears over here. So you can change this IP. But make sure that the IP that is over here, it is reflected in the virtual machine as well. So this is a significant value that you need to match on both sides. So coming back to virtual box IP addressing, let me click on file, preferences and network, then in host on adapter and click its IP address setting. So this is the IP address of the virtual box for this particular machine that I am trying to configure. I have given it the IP address of 56.100 because the machine itself which is over here, this one, uh, it is running a new Debian operating system 
and once we open this machine or log into this machine we will give it the IP address of 56.101 which we will be using in GNS3 setting that I had just shown you so let's now try to start the virtual machine just give it a second once it gets started it will give us the prompt for the username and the password and just hang in there for a while so once it gets booted up we get the login prompt the default login is the root is the username and the password is Cisco so once you do you do that you get logged into the machine and over here this is genus 3 dash iouvm is the name of the machine you need to uh, remember this thing because it will be reflected later in this lecture and for your own configuration as well do remember that you might need to keep it the same as this or you might need to change it because this is used once we are using the license file for IOU images so host name is very much important now coming on to the interface configuration portion we type in if config and we see that at the moment Ethernet 0 is not configured with any IP address we need to assign it an IP address you simply give the command if config Ethernet 0 and then the IP address 56.101 and also add a submit mask of 24 now once you do that this virtual machine it should be accessible from your PC or laptop through loop back interfaces now if I come over here and if I try to ping this IP address I can access it so we have the connectivity now what you need to do is that you need to open this machine into a web browser to add the IOU images into this virtual machine of course you can do the same using using let's say FTP protocol or even SCP protocol secure copy protocol but you can use the web functionality as well which is built in into this uh, virtual machine so you simply need to pop up the browser like this one I have and if I give the IP address let's just say 192.168.56.101 and port is 8000 I click or type enter and we see that we are presented with this information I click on upload images and uh, over here I have already uploaded these images you can repeat this exercise on your own simply click on browse and give it the path of IOU images that you have got also make sure that you select the IOU license file and upload the images and the license file into your virtualized machine now like I said earlier that you can create your own license file using the script that uh, I had shown you and I, we have discussed about it or maybe you can use this particular IUURC file for this very host name which is this one gs 3 iouvm you simply need to search the web and you will find the corresponding license file against this host name so once you do that you upload the IOU images and the license file come on to gs 3 in preferences and in iOS on Unix give the path of the license file you can get this path from here once you get the file license file uploaded you see the path where it is residing simply click simply copy this location and put it in the path of genus 3 license file location to add on IOU devices the procedure is the same click on IOU devices I have already added one but does not make any difference you simply click on new and over here you click on next just click on ok and over here give the name whatever you want to sign let's just type some garbage name and over here you again need to define the image name and from the web browser once you get the IOU file uploaded 
you see that this is the part that you get. So simply copy this part, like I have copied using Control C and put it over here. And once you click on finish, your image will appear like this one over here. I just added one layer three image. It does not. Uh, I I do not need to show you how how you can add more number of images. Please. It's just the same function that you repeat for each and every image that you want to add on to this uh, IO device template. So once you get the images uploaded and the important file, which is the license file, uh, you should be able to run your IOU devices. And not only IOU devices, but also you can get the IOU devices connected with your Dynamics based uh, Cisco IOS. Uh, emulated softwares. So let's say if we have got this device over here and if I pull up an other device which is over here and uh, let's try to connect these interfaces. Now these are these two devices that I have added. You can simply change the symbol at the moment it is showing it as a switch. You can change its symbol to make it look more clear and this is the layer 3 image that I have used. So I have changed it to the symbol of router. Likewise change this one to router symbol as well. Which is over here. And let's try to connect these using Ethernet zero interfaces. If you had have got the dynamic waves images of Cisco devices you can simply add them as well and they will just be get connected through to IAU images. So it's a very good functionality that IOU and dynamic based images run in the same very GUI interface. Now simply click on run these devices and uh, open up the console. So once these devices get booted up, we should get the prompts for both of them, which we do. This is the route number one. You can simply change its name to route number one or whatever name you like to have, say R1. And over here, if I get into the particular interface, which is Ethernet 0 v 0, and give it the IP address of 1.1.1.1, subnet mask of 8, do a no shut for this interface, and likewise click on the other router that we have just added change its host name to make it look like R2 or router number 2 then get into the interface which was Ethernet 0 leak 0 give it the IP address from the same subnet range with the subnet mask of 8 do a no shut and ideally we should be able to ping the routers interfaces of one and other. So if I come on to router number one and try to ping the interface of uh, router number two, which is 1112, uh, we should have the connectivity, which we do. So a great product and feature that uh, you get through GNS3 with embedded IO U support. Do practice around with this one. Uh, I hope you have liked the video and I would like to thank you for viewing. Hello guys. So in previous lecture I told you about IOU and also IOU web and in that very lecture I mentioned about uh, this product which is now known as Unified Networking Lab because IOU web is no more supported by this developer who is the author for IOU web and now the renamed product and this guy says and I believe that it's like that that this unified networking lab although it has been called as the upgrade version of IOU web but it has this application UNL it has been written from right from the scratch and what it really gives us is a end part which is a virtual machine that you can use in maybe virtual box or in uh, you can say virtual VMware workstation so VMware workstation support is there VMware client you can use it in or you can also use it in uh, Citrix 
servers. You can use Zen server if you want to or in ESXi server. So a broad range of programs that you can run this virtual machine in. Now the true beauty of this program, it comes in not only because of this virtual machine, but because of the number of platforms and appliances that this new virtualized environment supports. So this is the website of this wonderful product, which is unitlab.com, which you can see over here. And if you click on docs and on images, then if I scroll it down below where it shows me the detail of the images, then really look at this one. Look at the supported images on UNL. We can use Dynamips, which is the default for GNS3 that I had shown you earlier. It also supports IOL. So same platform supports multiple types of images. It also supports Kimu based images like we can see that it supports Cisco ASA firewalls or ASA virtualized firewalls. It also supports access controller servers, IPS or ISC devices from Cisco which are identity services engine. It also supports high end Nexus operating systems, Titanium and if I bring it down Look at this. You can emulate Alcatel services which you are able to find the right firmware for this service router. You can emulate that router in this platform, in this virtual device. You just need to have that, that particular software version that, that this product is supporting. Likewise, you can use a Ruben Network security devices which is ClearPass. You can use Brocade or if I come down below, you can even use F5 products. You can use Juniper, of course, then Palo Alto. So a complete range of uh, devices and specifically their models that this product for the footpath supports. And it was released in 2015. Earlier than that, it was IOU Web that I have already shown you. But since then, it is still in the development phase. So if you are kind of stuck somewhere, I would recommend that you explore the forums that are down below or the user posts down below and maybe you can find your answer because this is not still the finished product. The developer is still working on it and trying to improve it with each and every day. But still, it's a wonderful product and the great feature is that it's free and supports multiple platforms. So. If you need to use it, you simply need to come on to the download link. You click on the download and if I bring it down below, it says me that these are the two options that we can download from. So you just click on it and once you get the image, you should have something like, let me just show you the image. So this is the image size and uh, I believe its size is around 500 something. So yeah, so 560 megabytes. This is the over file you need to import it in the platforms that I had already mentioned. So once you get it imported, which I have done over here, this is the imported over file. There are not any particular settings that you know you need to be aware of. If I show you this, I have allocated it 2 GB of RAM, but if you are having more RAM, the the more is better, of course. Uh, some of the guys that uh, are uh, that, that have commented on this forum, they say that they have used this wonderful part in their ESXi softwares, which is a virtualized environment from VMware, and they have allocated even 64 MBs of RAM. So higher the RAM, the better it is, so that you can emulate many many devices in one big topology. Likewise, if I show you the processor, I have enabled physical address extent extension and I have just allocated one CPU for making of this video just to give you an idea that how you can use this product and how you can build upon to make large and complex topologies just need to give it physical resources so that it can work well. Likewise for storage I do not need to do anything I simply imported this device and it has got this disk in it. For networking 
I have binded this uh, networking adapter of this device with the virtual box interface that I have created with, with the name of VBOX Net Zero. I am working on uh, a Linux environment at the moment, it's Ubuntu, but for Windows, the things will be more or less the same. You just need to maybe tweak in a couple of things with regard to Windows. And of course, if you come on to the website itself, they show you that how you can install, download and install the particular product. For example, if I come over here and click on how to, and once the page gets opened up, if I bring it down below, so it says that if you, you need to follow this procedure, if you are doing installation of VMware player or VMware workstation for ESXi, you need to follow this one. So if you get stuck somewhere, which I really doubt, because it's pretty simple and straightforward procedure to get this product up and running. I had difficulty in, in importing this device because I did not use 64-bit architecture. So specifically I created Ubuntu machine with 64-bit architecture and now it's running good. So if I show you over here, you can see that the operating system Linux and the version is Ubuntu 64-bit. So what I'm going to do is now power up this device and take you inside that what options we have in there. So let's just power it up and once it gets started and completes its build boot sequence, we should see a UNL logo and its interface in this window which is over here. So let it boot it for a while and uh, let me just hang in here for a while. This, this is by the way Ubuntu server, Ubuntu customized version that is running in here. So once it gets booted up, you get this prompt. And uh, this is the important thing where it says that default root password is UNL. So I type in root and the password that it has already shown us is UNL. So once I do that, I see that I have entered into the machine, uh, which is Ubuntu server, which is written over here as well. You can see that welcome to Ubuntu. My cursor is not coming over here because this is the terminal that, that is kind of default comes in with the virtual box for Linux environment. So, and one more setback of this term is that there is no scroll bar on the right. So, once the command or the output goes up, I cannot really see what has, what has gone missing. So, what you can really do is that you can SSH to this device using terminal. If you are using Windows, you can use PuTTY or any other uh, terminal program that you are comfortable with, which supports SSH protocol. You can do an SSH and log into this device. So let me just show you. Let me bring up my terminal, which is over here. And uh, I'll just tell net this IP, which is 100, 100. Dot 1.1.2. But before I do that, I showed you that the network interface was connected with VBox Net Zero. So if you are in Windows environment and you are you have got you have created a loopback interface, maybe, or if you are if you are virtual box that or or maybe any virtual machine device that you are using and you are you are having its interface which is having a different IP address. So you need to set that IP address. Of the same class as this IP address, which is 100.1.1.2. So, if I come over here and show you the IP addresses, at the moment, this VBox Net Zero, which is the interface connected with this virtualized device, is having an IP address which is different than 100.1.1.2. So, really, there are two options either I change the address on my device, or I change the device, or I change the IP address in the virtualized device. So, let's change it on my side. Let's quickly do an if config and the name of the interface which is VBOX Net Zero and then the IP address. Let's just say that 100 dot 1 dot 1 dot 1. We'll have some password 24. So now it is asking me for my password which I do provide it. And now I should be able to ping these virtualized machines 
interface which is 100 112 which I can. So next step I can simply SSH this device with root login and putting in the IP address. It asks me the password, the password is UNL. So once I logged in, you can clearly see that now I am in the UNL device and now I can really scroll up and down and uh, show you in a better and comfortable way. So let's just minimize this one which is the default window for virtual box and uh, from here the things are more or less the same that I told you about for uh, uh, when when I was doing the lecture on IOU that you need to have a license file in case you are going to use IOU images in this virtual machine. This machine also supports dynamics but you but you need to put in the images at those particular locations like if I take you to that particular location which is CD, CD you change to change directory then OPT and show you the available options then we see that I have got unit lab and if I do an enter over here and show you the contents of this particular directory we see that we have got an add-ons data HTML labs wrappers so important ones is add-ons and of course every every directory is important but from the from the perspective of this video that i am making at the moment this add-ons is where you put on your images your actual ios's or iod images or juniper images or any other key images that this particular platform is supported you need to put them in here likewise these labs these are the, the these will contain contain the data that when you create a lab that lab information will be saved over here. So let's just go into this add-ons folder and let me show you that what we have got in here. Now I've got Dynamips folder, IOL folder, Kimu folder. This Kimu and IOL I believe are there by default but if they are not you need to create them. You create them as they are created over here and if you are trying to use something which may, you may not find in this video then I would recommend that you have a look at that particular website that I have shown you that which is unitlab.com and find specific information about the about the firmware that you are trying to use. I have used Dynamips and I will also Cisco Asakimu so I have created or one of them or maybe all of them I am sure that I did create Kimo folder and Dynamics a couple of weeks back before when I was testing this product to make you familiarize as well. So for Dynamics, if I show you the contents of Dynamics, we see that uh, we have this image which is for uh, router 3725 series. The image is Enter advanced enterprise class and this image is supported by this VM machine. So you need to be careful while putting in images that only putting those images which have which have we mentioned in that list and which are supported by this platform. Likewise if I show you the contents of uh, IOL images and uh, maybe Bin. then these are the images and this is the license file for this particular machine because I told you that license file needs to be created for that particular machine as it takes into account certain parameters and one of those parameters is the machine host name. So the procedure will be the same that you can generate the key for that particular machine and create a file by the name of IOURC and put that general key in that file and these are the two images for uh, layer 2 switches and for layer 3 that I have put in here make sure that uh, for Dynamips the extension is image and for IOL 
the extension is binary or bin. Similarly, I can show you the contents of uh, Kimu folder residing in add-ons, which is over here. This is the ASA folder that I have put in, and uh, in that folder, these are the default. I believe default five images, or maybe I need to put it like this. So, HDA Q Cow two and HDB Q Cow two they relate to the ASA firewall. And uh, if you want to add uh, Dynamics image, what I did and what you can do as well, you can simply use FTP protocol or SCP protocol. So since SSH is already running on this virtual machine, by default, you do not need to enable SSH in this machine. Likewise, secure copy is also by default enabled on the machine. So if you need to securely transfer the files into the machine, you simply come to your terminal or whatever client you are using to access that particular machine and for example i can use scp command which securely copies the data so if i type in scp and after that space and the syntax is whatever your particular device is supporting so over here i can use it like i have a file by the name of one and then i need to type in the credentials to log into that machine which is the root username and I can type in the IP address and after that full colon and the name of the file that should be while it is copied onto that particular, particular virtual machine what name should it carry while it is being saved on that machine so I keep the name same which is one matching with this one which is on my machine and I press enter and after that, I need to give in the root password of this virtual machine, which is UNL. So once I do that, I see that the contents have been copied and the contents are placed in the root folder. So if I come on to this virtualized machine console and I type in CD and tilde sign, I press enter, I go into the default folder of the user root and over here if i type in ls or list to show me the contents of this folder i see that i have got this file which is one now just like that you you will need to copy the images that you want to emulate in this device and then from here you can move them around into those particular locations like for dynamics based images you need to put them in dynamics folder for IOL based images, you need to put them in the directory add-ons that I just show you, showed you. I add-ons and further in binary folder. Likewise, for Kimu, you need to put them in Kimu folder. And similarly for other images which are supported by this particular platform. So continuing from previous video, once you get your images copied into the virtual machine. And if I come on to the website and show you that if you want to add in Dynamics images, which is the portion of documentation over here, sometimes what really happens is that while you have added the images, it does not get booted up. So, and the, and the problems could be because of the wrong permissions that are associated with those particular files since this is this is the Linux environment, so we need to be careful about the permissions that what programs are, are authorized to execute those files. So to fix those permissions, there is a script in the virtual machine. You just need to execute it. And this is over here that in OPT unit lab wrappers. And you need to execute this file, which is UNL wrapper minus a fix permissions. So that should really take care of the permissions as for permissions problem. Uh, as far as configurations and adding of images in the virtual machine is concerned. For Dynamics, you can also use this 
portion of the documentation which says that you can calculate the idle PC values for your particular routers. So you really just need to follow along with this. It's, it's not that difficult. Once you follow it, it will become pretty much easier. So let me just come back to the console of the virtual machine. So I have already added the Dynamics image which I have shown you and a couple of IOL images that I just showed you that one was for L2 or switching and the other one was for L3. Also the license file has been created. Now how to access this and how to run the images. The good thing is that you do not need to install anything or any client. You just need to open up the browser and access the interface which interface IP address that I had shown you earlier which was 100.1.1.2 for my machine which I am using at the moment and just point your browser to that particular IP address. So if I come over here and try to open it by typing in the IP address you see that I have opened it and the username and password is admin and unl same as root. So once I get logged in, this is showing me the system status that how much CPU is being used, how much memory is being used. Since I'm not running any virtual machine, so it's not taking any any memory uses at the moment. If you are using this is important, if you are using a SAF firewall and you have allocated let's say one CPU for this uh, virtualized machine, then a SAF firewall take I would say around 80 to 100 percent of your CPU. So make sure that while you are trying to emulate a big topology, you give them enough resources. So to create a topology, you need to click on labs and uh, you can create a folder over here as well by clicking on the actions and maybe add a new folder or add a new lab. I have already created a folder by the name of